Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Wadda and if you're new here, I'm a fifth year medical student originally from London but studying in Bulgaria. Now if you haven't watched part one to this short series that I like to call the BG series, pause this video and go and check it out. The link will probably pop up here or here and I will drop it in the description down below. In that video, we discussed what it's like living and studying in this country, what the language barrier is like and are the people nice or racist? So go and check out that video and come back. In this part, the second part of the series, we're going to discuss the application process, the course structure, what are exams like here um, for our subjects and so much more. So let's dive into part two. So the medical course here is a six year degree. Now this is split into different parts. You've got your preclinical years, which are your first and second year, your clinical years, which are your third, fourth and fifth years. And then your sixth and final year is completely different to the first five years. That's because it's what we call an internship year and it's equivalent to a foundation year one position in the UK. Now, when we graduate from Bulgaria, we have what we will call a full registration license as opposed to a provisional. So you can pretty much take your degree anywhere in the world and it's fully GMC accredited. In our preclinical years, we cover subjects that are more theoretical. So that includes biology, chemistry, physics, biophysics, anatomy. Anatomy is practical because we use cadavers from day one, okay? We start to, you know, nitpick at different things like muscles, arteries, nerves, veins, you name it. We literally see every single thing from day one. I love that part actually. Anatomy was probably one of my favorite subjects. But we also learn intensive Bulgarian. Intensive Bulgarian is to teach you the language so that you can find your way around the country, the city you're living in, and also so that you can learn it in time for your clinical years. Because in our clinical years, we have a lot more patient contact. We cover subjects like urology, neurology, ophthalmology, um, psychiatry, orthopedics, pediatrics, disaster medicine, you name it, we cover so many different specialities and we have a lot of patient contact as well and this is where our Bulgaria comes in because we need to be able to do some history taken from the patients so that at least we can come up with some kind of differential diagnosis or apply what we've learned in terms of our textbooks and all the theoretical knowledge that we absorb and try and see what certain conditions look like. So those subjects are very, very practical. In our final year, however, we do what we call a rotation. So rotations are different blocks of different specialities. Um, everything that we've covered from our first five years is pretty much a, a repeat, but it's also a chance for you to apply what you've learned throughout your entire degree so that it can bridge the gap between being a medical student and actually going out into the big wide world and doctoring. So yeah, at the end of every rotations as well, we've got what we call state exams and these will seal your degree. The teaching here is pretty good. It's all right, actually. It's all taught in English, so none of it will be in Bulgarian. Um, the only part that is in Bulgarian, however, is when we do have patient contact, and that's only just for us to, you know, practice our language skills and also to be able to take as much history from the patient so that you can have everything that you need to be able to diagnose them in our clinical seminars. Um, but all of this is all in a teaching environment. The teachers do help to translate what the patient is saying and and they do help to translate the questions that we have to ask the patient as well. So it's a very, it is very nice interaction as well. Um, but the rest of the course is entirely in English. So our clinical seminars, our classroom learning, our lectures, all of it is in English. So you will understand everything that's happening. But I would say that majority of the learning is pretty much self-taught. Now, don't get me wrong, you have come to university, so you can't necessarily expect to be spoon-fed, but you do have to take responsibility of your own learning. So that means making sure that you're staying on top of it. You are reading before you get to clinical seminars, you're going over lectures and you're, well, you're very well versed into the topic before you get to the classroom. And it is very useful when they give us a conspectus. So this is basically a list of learning objectives or topics that we need to be very well versed in and know in time for our exam. So you can follow this list on as we are learning throughout the entire semester and you can learn and you know read up ahead as well. 
Exams here are completely different to the way they are in the UK. So most subjects will follow a standard um, structure of exams. And that's basically the first stage will be an MCQ stage. And this is like the testing stage where they'll give you a number of questions where you'll have to answer them. And they're all in an MCQ format. They may have short open questions as well, depending on the subjects, but it's entirely, well, mostly MCQs. Um, and if you pass this stage, so that's usually about 60% or maybe 70%, again, depending on the subject um, if you pass this stage you move on to the second stage which is the essay stage now this I know you're thinking what you write an essay about <laughs> but this is basically you pick out a point from the conspectors randomly so they'll give you a bowl of different you know conspectors points um, in there you'll pick out randomly one point and then you'll write about half a page or a side of different points pertaining to that topic so say for instance the exam is an anatomy exam and the topic you picked out was the muscles that are in the forearm so you basically talk about how the muscles in the form the forearm are split into different groups um, and you'll talk about what muscles are into those groups you'll also talk about the insertion points the origin of those muscles you'll talk about what those um, muscles are innervated by so what nerves what arteries supply that muscle what veins will drain that muscle so different things like that and it will literally as you're writing 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 it will literally end up becoming half a side or even a whole side that's what they mean by an essay i remember when we first got here the first time you have to you know take part in these exams you're gonna be taken aback a little bit because it's not something that you're used to we're used to what having set of questions and just answering them handing them off to an examiner not seeing or hearing about it for about a couple of months and then getting your results but here it's different like i said you'll be going through different stages now those were the only two stages i told you about there's more okay there is more <laughs> So after the second stage, your essay will be taken up by the professor, the head of department usually, or whoever is you know taking part or examining the students on that day. And they will read your essay and then they will ask you an oral. So they will oral you or ask you questions based on your topic, or they can have free reign and ask you questions based on anything in that subject. Now, orals are really, I'll pretty much say they're like an interview, okay? So they are very much subjective. It depends on what the examiner thinks about you and you know how you're presenting your answers, how you are answering the questions and how confident are you in answering their questions? So do you know the topic? That's how they will gauge if you know what you're talking about. Um, so that's what I mean by it's pretty much an interview. You need to come off across as confident and you need to come off across like you know what you're talking about. That's the best way to get the best scores here. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it. Like I said, some subjects may be different. So for example, in anatomy, it will add a, a practical stage whereby you will be given a section of a cadaver and you'll have to um, identify a certain structure that they've pointed to. So some subjects may add a practical segment to the exams, but usually that's what the exam structures are like. So MCQ, essay writing stage and oral. And if it's a subject that requires a practical, they'll add in a practical. Sorry about that guys, my camera died. So I'm sure this is the part you've all been waiting for. How can you apply to study medicine or dentistry here in Bulgaria? Now you can do this in two ways, either through an agency or by yourself. Now if you go through an agency, they will basically represent you. So they will liaise between you and the university that you want to apply for, whether that is Pleven, Plovdiv, Sofia or Trakia. They will basically collect all your documents, your ID, your qualifications, your certificates, everything. They will translate it they will legalize it and they will basically submit that for you to the universities they will also make sure you get a spot in terms of the entrance exams yes there are entrance exams and we'll speak about that in a second but they will basically do everything for you now please 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 research about the agency that you want to go with or you are thinking about going through because there are so many agencies because of the fact that the number of students that have you know come here has increased so much exponentially in fact yeah exponentially okay the number of agencies that have now formulated have also increased so please 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 do your research as to what packages they offer the prices of those packages what services are under those packages or what they're going to do for you just the application process or are they going to help you find apartments are they going to help you sort out your bills setting up phone lines things like that basically are they also going to give you resources for their entrance exams 
Think about all of those things. Make sure you do your research before you decide to go with an agency. If you can get a hold of people that have also gone through that agency, then speak to them because they could give you a little bit more of an insight as to what the experience was like working with them. So do your research. I can't emphasize how important it is to do your research because there have been a lot of people that have had um, bad experiences with agencies. Not to say they're all bad, but it is possible you can get exploited. So please, this is me just being real. Um, do your research, okay? The second route is to directly apply to the university of your choice by yourself. So you can basically do everything that an agency will do for you. So in terms of submitting your applications, legalizing them and translating them. Those are the main two important parts of the process and submitting your documents to the university. Um, and then you're going to have to pretty much do everything by yourself in terms of, you know, finding apartments, which is not difficult. We'll go into that in part three of the series and um, yeah, and setting up bills and, you know, different things. For you to live in the country but one piece of advice if you're gonna directly apply by yourself please stay on top of your stuff because on this side of the world eastern europe nobody will chase you for your stuff okay so you need to constantly call them call the admissions office and ask them have you received my documents have you received this what's the next step always make sure you're on top of the entire process make sure that everything is received and make sure you are aware of where your application process is at if you have a place to sit the entrance exam everything stay on top of it now the entrance exam there is an entry test in biology and chemistry and all it covers is a level knowledge because that's all they expect you to know so if you want to know what topics is covered in this there should be a conspectus again this is a list of topics that may come up in the exam on the university website so whether that is sophia plovdiv plevin or trachea you can go onto their website directly and get the conspectus the list of topics that could come up in the exam there should also be entrance sample tests on the university website. This is for you to get a feel of what the exam is going to look like on the day and it's all MCQ questions, okay? So you can get a bit of a practice to um, answer those questions and you can, you know, get a feel of how the exam is going to go on the day. The exam is sat on a designated day with everybody else but there are multiple days that they do sit these entrance exams. So don't worry if you can't make it a specific day, you can always choose a different day but just make sure that you are registered for the day of your choosing okay there's also a fee that you have to pay for the exam so make sure that is done also and that's it for this video guys i hope that you found something in here useful if you did comment down below because i'd love to hear from you and if you have any more questions comment that down below too or stick around for the last part of this series which is part three we will be taking a deeper dive into all things money so tuition fees living expenses accommodation all of that sorts of stuff we will be covering in the next video until then guys take care